Hi everyone, I'm Eloise and welcome back to our second last day of our microlighting sprint here with Coding Kids. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about iterative design. So first of all, what is iterative design? Well, it's an invaluable technique to all coders at any levels of proficiency. Let's say you wanted to build a project, our dearly beloved maze game, for example, with our monkey. Well, you could theoretically go ahead and build the entire game if you wanted to. However, when we need to then test our finished project and it doesn't run, where would we even start looking for errors to fix? So let's think about what editor design is in this kind of context. So it's a kind of guess and learn approach to coding and debugging in general. Now, debugging refers to finding errors in your code that prevent it from working and fixing them, basically. So it's when you start by building a small section of the project um, and then testing and debugging it before we add any other parts to it. So editor design in this way, it means that we build projects by progressively checking and testing the, design, uh, the, the project as it gets bigger and more complex. In this way, we can then immediately get feedback on what we're building and we can identify errors sooner rather than later in, um, in our process. So let's have a think about how we could use it again in this monkey maze game. So we can recall that we have our program where the monkey needs to move through the maze using the arrow keys. Well, when we teach students how to program the monkey using these arrow keys, we tell them how they only need certain blocks to program the monkey. And those are these ones just here. These are all the blocks that you need to move the monkey. Um, they're invited to experiment to identify which combination of these blocks work. So the great thing about Scratch is that it provides for immediate visual feedback, which encourages experimentation as a means to find the required solution. So using the principles of iterative design, we can start by picking one arrow key. Let's just start with the up arrow key, maybe. Which blue block do we think over here would make the monkey move up when the arrow key is pressed? You can drag in one of the blocks, any of the blocks at all. I might just try this one at the top right here. Then you can test out your code. Does the monkey move up when I press the arrow key? Well, let's have a little look. I'm pressing up and he's definitely not going up. So in that case, all right, if I had gotten it correct, then we can just move on to the next arrow key, but I didn't. So that's all right. All that means I have to do is just pop that one out and just try another one. So I'll try popping in the next one just here. And I'll try it again, press my up arrow key. Is it working? And there's my monkey moving up for me. It is just that simple. So if I try and quickly put the rest of the blocks together, I know that that one goes there. I know that that one goes there. And I know that this last guy goes down here. And now all my arrow keys will be working just fine. And again, I can go through and test these before I try and move on through each one of them. And that is honestly all it is. So just to recap, in today's episode, we talked about iter iterative design. So that is about building one part of your project first, then testing it and debugging it before you move on to the next section. It's an amazing guess and learn approach, and it's a fantastic way to um, approach all of your projects that you're building in Scratch or otherwise. Now, it's not too late to sign up for our mini quizzes, all 10 of them. And when you complete all 10 of them, you can receive your certificate for an hour of teacher PD. You can subscribe to those mini quizzes in the link that we'll put down below in just a moment. Now in tomorrow's episode, which will actually be our very last episode in the microlighting series, uh, we'll be sharing our biggest ninja tip for building digital solutions. This is Eloise signing off.